In response to questions from a group of Pharisees regarding the legality of divorce, Jesus takes them straight to the heart of the issue. He explained that the only reason Moses gave laws making room for divorce was because of hard hearts amongst God's people. Divorce was never a part of God's design. To demonstrate this, he then took these religious leaders back to the beginning where God created mankind, male and female, and declared his design for them to be made into one flesh. Jesus continued, What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. In verse 13, with children being brought to Jesus to receive a blessing, his disciples, presumably thinking he was too busy for such things, began to rebuke them. We're told when Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said, Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it at all. Not only was it Jesus' joy to bless these little ones, he used them as an example of the kind of person to whom the kingdom belongs. In verse 17, as Jesus was about to set out on a journey, a man came running up and knelt before him. Combining the information we have from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, we discover this man to have been young, wealthy, and a ruler who truly tried to be a good person. Essentially, he had everything our world yearns for and was everything people strive to be. Yet we discover in this passage he was missing the only thing that really mattered. The young man referred to Jesus as good teacher and asked what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus first directed him to consider how in his assertion that he was good, the young man was in essence acknowledging he was God. Jesus then pointed him to the commandments every good Jew sought to uphold. The young man claimed to have kept those, yet was still acutely aware he had fallen short. Here we're told Jesus looked at him and felt a love for him. This wonderful detail provides important context for what was said next as he told the young man of what he lacked. Jesus said, Sell all that you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, follow me. The statement was not Jesus suggesting a price with which the kingdom could be bought, but more of him putting his finger on the misplaced priority of this young man's life. We are told he went away grieving, for he owned much property. Jesus remarked to his disciples of the great difficulty it would be for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. He declared it an easier prospect for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Astonished, the disciples asked, who then can be saved? In response, Jesus delivered a tremendous insight on salvation. With people, it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. After again explaining his upcoming death and resurrection, we are told in verse 36 of yet one more instance where the disciples completely missed his message and soon after were seeking positions of prominence in the kingdom of God, James and John asked Jesus if they could sit on his right and left hand in his glory. Jesus patiently informed them that they didn't know what they were asking and then asked them, Are you able to drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? Unaware he was referencing coming suffering, they confidently responded, We are able. Jesus assured them they would drink of the same cup and be baptized with the same baptism he was to be baptized with, but as for the request for a special position, that was not his to give, but for those for whom it had been prepared. The other disciples, having caught wind of this conversation, were upset at James and John for going behind their backs in an attempt to negotiate a deal. Jesus called them all together to explain how the economy of the kingdom and the behavior of its citizens is to look different from what they were used to seeing in the world around them. The rulers of the Gentiles used authority as something to lord over others. Jesus revealed how greatness in the kingdom of heaven is service. He who wishes to be first of all should be slave of all. And verse 45 is where we find our theme verse in Mark, where Jesus, God's servant, tells of his mission. He said, For even the Son of Man did not come into this world to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. God's servant was living and leaving for them the greatest example this world would ever see. 
Thank you for watching this latest offering from Honeycomb Summaries. We pray these five-minute chapter overviews are a blessing and serve to help you grow closer to God. Please take time to go back through and read and study each chapter for yourself. If you're here and don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and aren't assured of the hope of heaven, please don't put off that important decision another day. For more information, search our channel for a video called Three Minutes That Could Change Your Life. Please share this video with anyone who might like to learn more about what God has to say in His Word. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to be notified as new content is released. Thanks again for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you.